Happy Valentine's Day. Halo 4 Genesong Cut, created by Soy. This is the first Halo mod to include a cutscene of the Master Chief donning the new Mark VI armor once he is finally aboard the Infinity. So this means the armor Chief is wearing coming out of cryosleep closer resembles the original Mark VI armor from Halo 3 but not as drastic of an armor change as Halo 4 Retail depicts. While the heads-up display is not an exact one-for-one, one, the shield meter, however, is the exact same from Halo 3. This is something many fans believe would have been the better solution in changing Chief's armor in Halo 4 for the Reclaimer Saga. Have Chief acquire an upgraded Mark VI once he boards Infinity. Thanks to Soy, that request has been fulfilled for the fans. And I think it's neat seeing Chief in these cutscenes before acquiring his new armor. The lighting looks great on the lighter shade of green. Then once you, as the player, push through several levels to board Infinity, you see Chief in his upgraded armor. This allows a greater appreciation of the new and improved suit. It feels like you as the player earned it in a way. Just like you would earn new armor multiplayer, in this instance, it's the campaign. You'll notice the heads-up display in this upgraded Mark VI armor has detailed changes, the shield meter being the most noticeable. While this mod Halo 4 Genesong Cut commits to visual changes, this mod's overall objective is to restore cut content while refining Halo 4's strengths. Halo 4 may not be your most favorite game in the franchise, but if you have a more dynamic outlook of the game, this mod will satisfy you plenty and it's more responsive AI, altered weapon functions, and unique visual and audio changes. This Grunt's armor, for example, has a more detailed spiked methane tank, similar to what we saw back in Halo Combat Evolved. There's various Grunt armor types in this mod, and it's nice to see a detailed rendition of classic armor. Notwithstanding some firearms, the Storm Rifle has undergone a visual and behavioral modification. You see here in retail the long barrel, a deeper purple color scheme, whereas in the Genesong cut, the barrel has been removed. Both ends of the Storm Rifle have been aligned, and this resembles more of the Covenant Plasma Rifle with a lively plasma bolt animation primed at the front. The Storm Rifle is in light blue clad, with the Storm Covenant emblem present on both sides of the weapon. Despite lacking a barrel, the Storm Rifle seems to be more accurate in this mod and doesn't overheat as quickly. Therefore, I found myself using the Storm Rifle more than I ever did playing through the retail campaign initially. I can appreciate it when a mod makes me want to use a weapon more so than the retail version. I think the overheating animation with the altered design of the Storm Rifle looks so cool. Now when it comes to the plasma pistol, it's been reverted back to its more original design and is a viable option for dealing damage. Switching from your primary storm rifle to your secondary plasma pistol is a great combination to consider using. Mentioning audio changes in this mod, one example is the removal of the cricket chirpy-like sound effect for weapons such as the Magnum and Battle Rifle, starting with retail. Now for this mod. The Halo 2 Anniversary Battle Rifle Foley from Multiplayer works well in this campaign and sounds better than retail. Many sound effects are changed to sound more pleasant. Entering Requiem, we will listen to the changes of the Warthog here soon, 
but visually this is where the uncompressed textures was the most noticeable for me. It's incredible how this game looks on an Xbox 360, but now you and the Chief can appreciate it even more graphically refined, from the distant Forerunner structures to the dirt and grime on a weathered warthog. Now let's listen to the modified engine sound. Chief? About my condition? Not now, Cortana. Listen to that engine noise. It doesn't have that monster truck fully like in retail, but rather a more subdued, pleasant sound that still expresses power. The Ghost also has a nice boost sound effect that's more satisfying to the ears. Let's have a look. These stealth elites look so good. In fact, the elites in general have been improved with a more noticeable rank structure through gameplay and fixed facial anatomy. Another cool detail to note are the altered thumbnails in the level selector. The pictures are of concept art that look really good, and I think this is the best way to implement them in the game. Selecting a level will reveal the artwork in full. As Jimenez, Paolo J. Then Lasky's still out there somewhere. Infinity, another unique level to enjoy the uncompressed textures in this mod. This is where we'll start digging into the altered Forerunner weapons in this video. Check out the capability of the bolt shot. The bolt shot is devastating with its modified secondary fire, and effective with sustained shots. It also recharges like Forerunner weapons in Halo Infinite instead of inserting a cartridge. The suppressor has been changed to behave like it does in Halo 5 Guardians. You may utilize the scope, and you can notice how effective the bolts guide to its target. Let's take a moment to look at several Promethean weapons in action. You can feel the power of the light rifle. It's become my favorite Promethean weapon in Genesong Cut. When you mix the Unice and Promethean weapons together in this mod, you'll notice how primitive the Unice weapons are compared to Prometheans. Promethean weapons have two effective functions. Unice has one. I still like using the Unice weapons and will often resort to them, but it's interesting how sleek and efficient Promethean weapons are compared to the Unice's. I see the benefit and functionality with Promethean weapons over Unice's. It does not just come down to more ammo. Since the weapon sandbox is more purposeful in this mod, the DMR has been removed. Playing this mod you'll notice how redundant the DMR would be when the battle rifle engages targets just as far in this mod, with three bullets on the way instead of one. No level in Halo 4 puts you in a situation where your target is too far for a battle rifle and too close for a sniper rifle with the Genesong mod. It may seem like a bold decision removing the DMR, but it makes sense when playing this mod, and I appreciate the confidence in Moxie to stick with the decision. As they say, stick to your guns, even if it's removing the DMR. Good luck, Chief. Lasky out.
Enjoying the Scorpion tank run, the Wraith plasma mortars have been improved visually. The plasma is similar in appearance to previous Halo games with a larger diameter at the front of the plasma mortar round and a more noticeable blue tail that streaks towards its target. Since the AI is more responsive than retail, this tank section is more dire. Everything feels heavy. Your tungsten round is going to arc due to gravity, and one more Wraith plasma round could destroy you and your tank. The Mantis is now equipped with the Hannibal Gauss turret that we use in Halo 5 Guardians. Instead of gunmetal silver, the Mantis is more of a sage green, similar to Chief's armor color. The AI being more responsive includes enemies and allies. Playing on larger vehicle sections, the friendlies and a warthog can deal some damage and distract Covenant-occupied ghosts and wraiths, to include Revenants. Soy included Revenants in Genesong Cut, and the high rate of fire plasma turret takes a considerable amount of time to overheat, and they're as durable as a Toyota. Gauss turret sounds more devastating. Gotta love the altered and improved sniper rifle fully. The Covenant Beam Rifle has a sleeker, lower profile design as opposed to the bulky retail version. You can see here the Forerunner structures have weathered details instead of completely clean and pristine as shown in retail. That makes sense, these structures are in the atmosphere, exposed to elements, so they will look as such. Inside the structures, you'll see here soon how there's more color than just silver walls. But to get inside, there's a more engaging mid-air fight to be had in the Pelican. We can see inside the Forerunner structure there's gold accent, giving more depth to the wall's indentations. As for the UNSC saw, this light machine gun has a slower rate of fire than retail, yet seems to produce more damage per shot. I always felt like I was dispensing too many rounds in retail than the damage truly dealt. Referencing the electric sphere effect, that is from the cut stasis rifle. Stepping inside the stasis field or being shot by the stasis rifle will slow you down. It won't affect your shields or your health, but it buys the Prometheans more time to shoot at you. Are housed in Faraday. I bet there's a release around here somewhere. Oh. 
This is the Bishop Beam, a cut Halo 4 weapon similar to the Sentinel Beam. This modified binary rifle will eviscerate a cluster of enemies in one pull of the trigger. Similar to the incineration cannon. But still noticeable differences. I just noticed this cool modified sound effect after firing the light rifle. Listen closely for a whistling sound effect. Now the hard light shield is more useful with the more reactive AI. I recommend keeping it with you when playing on heroic or legendary in close quarters. It's been modified to last longer and it's more durable. Make sure you don't miss out on using the plasma launcher that's been well imported into this mod. It'll come in handy for big targets. Genesong Cut also retains your first person view when using the thruster pack, which is such a great detail that mod authors have been using. Cortana. Cortana. Halo 4 Genesong Cut is described from the mod author as a director's cut. It's not intended to be a mod that reverts Halo 4 to Bungie era. With that in mind, there's a lot of awesome details this mod executes in its gameplay and visuals and it's a much more enjoyable experience than retail. Download it today by clicking on the link in the description of this video, and check out my other videos. K-Y-O-T Coyote